audience. Um, my name is Greg Newby. I'm the chief scientist at the Arctic Region Supercomputing Center. That's a uh, sort of regional um, scale, uh, full service supercomputing center. We are uh, based at the University of Alaska, Fairbanks. See, that's what I don't want. Looks great on this screen, but that's uh, the opposite on that screen. The uh, University of Alaska Fairbanks, of course, is in uh, Fairbanks, Alaska. And uh, ARSC is um, not one of the terror grid sites, but we're, um, uh, we're a site that has a, a pretty long and uh, in some ways similar history of being uh, very active in uh, uh, sort of the academic realm of supercomputing. So we're part of something called the High Performance Computing Modernization Program, or the HPCMP. This is uh, operated out of the Depart Department of Defense in the United States. It's not the same as um, the DOE sites like Lawrence Livermore and whatnot. It's also not the same as the TerraGrid sites, which get their funding from National Science Foundation. But they're kind of similar in a lot of other ways. Um, the uh, Let's give this another shot. OK, I feel pretty good about that. The um, HPCMP, the, which what we call affectionately the uh, mod office, is the, um, the DOD place that procures supercomputers for the big Defar Department of Defense labs. And ARSC, ARSC, is the only one which is at a university. The rest are like the Army Research Lab and the Navy uh, Lab and so forth. So here's a little bit of a presentation outline. I already started while we were firing up slides with a little bit about ARSC. Um, this is a nice view looking uh, uh, over, the, over the hills. And uh, we're, as I said, ba basically your full featured, fully featured uh, supercomputing center academic uh, emphasis servicing uh, DOD users through the HPCMP. We also have a lot of academic users. And uh, like the TerraGrid sites, uh, things are very free and open. It's all open systems research, no um, classified or sensitive data, anything like that. Uh, I mentioned we're operated by the university. And uh, uh, we have uh, some in-house research as well. So I'm going to zip through these slides. If you miss a little technical detail, go ahead and yell out right away, because I, I uh, won't be doing a lot of repetition in here. I have about 32 slides in uh, less than 20 minutes. And someone should be waving at me when I'm running out of time. Um, so we called the system Midnight. It's from Sun Microsystems. We live in the land of the midnight sun, so it's a pun, right? Uh, so Midnight is the name of the, the system, and this is, of course, the Midnight Sun as seen from uh, that building you just saw, the Butrovich building. Uh, we entered production status July 16th of 2007, and the uh, uh, system was delivered in November of 2006 when we went through a testing regime that I'll, I'll talk about. Uh, as I mentioned down here, it's uh, about 2,300 compute cores. Theoretically, we'd be at around 12.1 teraflops. Of, uh, of capacity if you add up all the flops and all those Optron dual core processors. Uh, physically, we have a picture here of the Liebert overhead units. This is in a traditional data center uh, with hot, cold aisles. But uh, rather than adding the cooling capacity we needed for this new system uh, at the end of an aisle with one of the end aisle end Liebert systems that a lot of you have seen, uh, we went opted for these uh, uh, top mounted. Uh, these worked uh, very well for us. They bring the basically they bring the cooling right to where you want it to be. About 19 cabinets, as is mentioned on that slide. Uh, this is uh, InfiniBand cluster interconnect, uh, 400 some nodes. Uh, it's sort of virtually a few different clusters working together, as I'll, I'll, I'll mention momentarily, and a lot of different types of networking going on as well. Uh, your Ethernet, some fiber channels, some. Uh, uh, InfiniBand uh, as well. InfiniBand we use for both uh, MPI, so the high performance computing workload. We also use that for the storage interconnect to the uh, Lustre high performance file system. This is actually three slides that would stretch too far to be a useful size. So if you can think of going from left to right, um, the uh, large nodes, which we'll talk about, uh, we have 55 of these and uh, uh, several cabinets of those. Then we have several cabinets of the smaller nodes, which I'll talk about in just a moment. And mostly in the middle here, we have uh, one of the two InfiniBand switches. We have the uh, uh, management node, all those sorts of things. This is just a nice pretty picture of the uh, schematic showing the um, <coughs> different types of interconnects. And we have a, also another slide in a few moments that focuses just on storage. Here's our second InfiniBand switch. And uh, 
more on that momentarily. Let's talk about the nodes first. We'll sort of build, build up the uh, different elements that went into the supercomputer. We have uh, two different types of nodes. One is the X4600, the other is the X2200 M2. The 4600 is uh, what we call the larger nodes. Sometimes we call them the fat nodes or the thick nodes or the big nodes or what have you. Um, across the entire system, we have four gigabytes of memory per processing core. So these are dual core processors. So, so per socket, it's eight gigabytes of memory. And that's the same across the two different types of nodes. This is actually pretty good for a uh, supercomputer. Most supercomputers you see are uh, more in the two gigabytes, sometimes even uh, fewer than that. Um, so this is uh, Optron 2.6 gigahertz, 64-bit processor, of course. Hypertransport, of course, 8 gigabytes per socket. That adds up to 64 on the large nodes, a uh, gigabyte of total. And we do treat it as a uh, SMP system, as a uh, symmetric multi-processor uh, system. But of course, it's not really symmetric because the hypertransport isn't symmetric. This turns out to matter a lot more in the large nodes than the uh, smaller nodes. Um, and as I say, about uh, 55 nodes, and uh, that yields 880 cores. The X2200 M2 are the smaller nodes, the thin nodes. And these are uh, two sockets, 16 gig then total memory, same processor and whatnot. Uh, one thing that does help, though, is uh, on hypertransport, and I'm not doing the hypertransport architecture here. We have a presentation on, uh, two presentations on Tuesday where we'll, we'll highlight that. But basically, there are multiple hops to get to memory when you're going off socket. And uh, uh, the number of hops goes up for the larger system. And that does have a performance impact. And we've quantified that in various ways. And you, you might expect it depends on what job you're doing. But anyway, the large nodes uh, you know, essentially turn out to be not as efficient for an HPC workload as the smaller nodes. Of course, there are jobs that will run on the large nodes, like large memory jobs that won't run on the small nodes. So, so it's, it's a, a nice mix. The way this worked is uh, 256 nodes are on one InfiniBand switch. Those uh, switches I pointed uh, to you before are the 288-port uh, switches from Voltaire. Uh, 9288, I think, is the product number coming up on another slide. And uh, so 250, uh, I think it's 288, rather, nodes. Um, so we couldn't fit all of our 2200 nodes on one switch. So we had a couple of different possibilities. Uh, we couldn't go to a larger switch when we bought that. Since then, of course, Sun has come out with... Uh, uh, with larger switches that, that you'll probably be hearing about uh, here. And if not, I just let the cat out of the bag. Um, the uh, uh, 288 ports, so means that if we wanted to have a, a richer interconnect, we would have had to add a lot more switching gear. We didn't want to do that. So we went with two separate InfiniBand switches and uh, uh, a relatively thin interconnect between those two switches. And that's worked out very well. What it does mean is that people don't run across uh, essentially those three separate, if you want to think of it that way, subclusters. Um, and this is just a slide that, uh, that describes that. We have PBS Pro. That, uh, that is what really enforces where jobs run. When people submit a job, they, they, uh, they, don't, they don't accidentally run um, you know, across the interconnect without having the full bandwidth. Uh, some other, uh, others of the basics, and this slide does highlight some of the uh, different partners that we've been involved with in building this new system. Uh, it's uh, SUSE, although we did use Red Hat for the uh, what, what you might have heard previously called the thumper nodes, the 4500 nodes, um, due to uh, some uh, uh, OS compatibility support types of things. But from what users see, it's uh, SUSE Linux 9.3. Uh, 10, of course, has since then come out, but uh, Voltaire wasn't supporting it. Uh, and things have moved since then, but uh, you don't change your MPI stack and whatnot at the drop of a hat in a big system like this. So we'll, uh, we'll update gradually, I suppose. Um, a lot of Linux uh, people uh, really like Linux in the high-performance computing community. They find it to be very familiar. AIX they also find to be very familiar. Solaris, not so much. Uh, we would have been interested in Solaris, except that there's, no, uh, there's really no cluster, high-performance high cluster uh, storage for Solaris. Of course, we, we anticipate that'll change at some point with uh, the acquisition of CFS. Uh, Voltaire, I mentioned. PBS Pro, I mentioned. A bunch of different compilers. We went for path scale initially. What we discovered was that Portland Group was better supported for community code. So people would get like these big applications, uh, Worf and ROMs and CCSM and so forth, the big, you know, big applications that use up millions and millions of hours on our system. And the uh, developers did not put in path scale support. So eventually, we just went ahead and added Portland Group, which uh, uh, provides a somewhat better support. 
had a lot of requests to uh, hear about storage. We have sort of a hierarchical hybrid system of storage on Midnight. It's uh, very interesting. Luckily, it's also fairly transparent to the end user. This uh, is a somewhat different diagram than what you saw before, and I know I'm not resting long enough to uh, look at it in detail, but basically it shows that we're using some fiber, we're using some InfiniBand, and we're also using some uh, Ethernet for our storage network. I, uh, I think, mentioned the 4500 nodes previously known as a thumper. These are those uh, very dense uh, nodes, 24 terabytes raw aggregate storage per thumper, and we got six of them, so that's about 144 terabyte raw. By the time you deduct RAID overhead and, and uh, some of the management overhead, we ended up with about a 68 terabyte file system, which is actually pretty cool when you type DF in it and you see the big, big numbers there. Um, but we uh, uh, use that for uh, high performance workspace. We have basically a short term and a long term uh, area because uh, one thing that happens with high performance computing is you add spindles to get performance and you end up typically with more space than you really need, especially if you're doing aggressive purging or quotas, those types of things. Um, as I mentioned, this is over the InfiniBand uh, network. One thing that uh, I think you, you can get now with no problem, these 4500s that we have are PCI X bus with a single InfiniBand card. We are looking to put a second card in on the second bus. It turns out that's not supported by uh, the various vendors, not, not Sun, but the, the other guys involved. But we're hoping that'll uh, become supported. But uh, PCIe would offer a somewhat higher uh, aggregate throughput. This is a little bit more detail on Lustre. I'm not going to uh, read through this whole thing. I did provide my slides. So hopefully they'll be linked in to the site by the end of the talk. And uh, if not, grab my card or grab me or email me, newbie at arsc.edu. I can email you a PDF of these, of these slides, no problem at all. These are uh, uh, prepared for this presentation, but there's nothing confidential in them as far as ARSC is concerned. A uh, little bit on the luster. And uh, uh, basically, Lustre has been doing fine for us. We got the throughput we were expecting, and the performance really hasn't decreased much as the uh, file system is filled up. We have had some issues with Lustre, um, a variety of different things that are going on, but, uh, but essentially we've worked through all of them. Cluster uh, 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 CFS has been very good to work with. The, um, yeah, okay. Uh, the other thing we have there is some NFS. We use this basically for home directories, non-high performance. You don't want to use NFS for your high performance uh, uh, workspace on your large systems. Shared QFS is also there. This operates over the uh, uh, fiber channel to our large uh, 6800, I'm sorry, our large uh, uh, 8500 storage tech silo, which uses a, a combination of different types of tapes. Uh, this works very well for us. Shared QFS is wonderful. It's uh, Linux. Capable, so we have sort of a mix of Linux on the supercomputer, but Solaris over on the um, uh, the SAM side. Also, some local disk, of course. Um, I think I'll just go ahead and skip over these uh, research slides. We have a lot of different research going on, a lot of different uh, specialist uh, specialty, especially in the um, sort of uh, pan Arctic north. Uh, uh, high latitudes, and a lot of geophysical types of things. Do a lot of weather, a lot of climate, a lot of, um, uh, uh, like I said, geophysical, spatial types of things. Um, I had two slides here that I want to um, uh, highlight because they're, this is, if, if you look in the NDA, 0.7 says that sun is here and there are a lot of sun people here to learn from their customers and listen and to know what to do. Here's a couple of slides that'll help. And then there's a few more after that that are more general. Um, Early on, we had uh, a couple of major issues, and I won't go into them, but these were month-long, uh, basically, outages for, uh, for the deployment process, process where we couldn't move forward. Very major issues involving uh, very big fixes. And uh, they weren't Sun's fault, I want to make that clear, but the thing that saved us was a very effective testing procedure that we got from the High Performance Computing Modernization Program. Very effective. So effective that we found problems, demonstrated them. They were major, major problems. Trust me on this. Major problems requiring significant fixes. Not Sun's fault, okay? We found them. Other people had the same exact year and hadn't found them. So having a good testing procedure is really important. And believe me when I say the problems that we found were not the types of problems that would uh, be something you'd like to see. Let me um, 
uh, pause on this, this is something that's going on currently, is basically support. The uh, dealing with a lot of different vendors for support can be difficult, we recognize it's difficult. What we're finding is that we're still calling up Sun and they're having us run Solaris commands. We're on Linux, folks. Okay, the, the, and then we're uh, you know, having the support personnel not read the tickets, not read the email before they try to follow up. So there's a lot of um, uh, you know, support things we want to try to work through. And the highlight from one of our tech guys here is to say, hey, downtime matters. If you have a node that crashes on a five, you know, let's say a, a, a 256 node job, one node crashes on an eight hour run, that's a series of other runs. How many aggregate hours have you lost when that one node failed? And we don't think that that's uh, sufficiently recognized. I have a few slides here for, um, uh, for centers, which are, are represented here, basically saying you gotta work hard on these commodity clusters, you gotta do a lot of your own design, a lot of your in internal support. Uh, for the um, uh, potential customers, as I uh, mentioned, uh, Linux is really where it's at. If you, if you wanna run a supercomputer these days, you need that high performance cluster storage. Uh, and Sun is not yet as fully up to speed as we'd like with, uh, with Linux. Uh, and this is a recap of what I just said. Um, and the uh, uh, application tuning, benchmarking, and so forth is something that we'd uh, be happy to help with. Um, so it's doing a lot of good work. We've uh, went through a lot of learning uh, process. The Sun hardware is very hot. The partners are hot. And, uh, and it's uh, uh, working very well for us. But issues, as I mentioned, we're doing a few presentations on the multi-core performance and uh, uh, one that's sort of a uh, slightly longer version of what I'm doing here at the uh, SC exhibit floor. So I think that's it and I'm probably 